You're listening to the Washington State Real Estate Investing Podcast. This episode brought to you by The Easy Home Buyer, serving the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area. If you're an investor in the greater Spokane area looking to connect with wholesalers, look no further than The Easy Home Buyer. Click on the link in the show notes to be put on their buyer list today. And check out episode 17 with The Easy Home Buyer founder, Chad Young. And by FlexiSpot, the maker of ergonomic furniture. If you're looking for a new adjustable desk, look no further than the E7 standing desk. The retractable frame allows you to adjust the desk's width from 43.4 inches out to 74.8 inches. So you can have a desk that is over six feet long that adjusts in height to fit the needs of your space and office. Save $20 now with the offer code WSE720 at checkout. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Washington State Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Udick. In today's episode, I chat with Alexis McPherson, a home inspector and owner of Bats in the Belfry Home Inspection, LLC. This is our last episode of the 2022 year and the last episode of our first year and first season of the Washington State Real Estate Investing Podcast. Thank you to you, our listeners, to those who have been interviewed and our sponsors who support us in this first year. Flexispot.com, Chad Young and the Easy Home Buyer, Kelly Clark at the Coeur d'Alene REI Summit, Billy Dees of Dees Real Estate, and our newest sponsor, Commencement Bank, who you will be hearing more from in the new year. Thank you to all of you for supporting our efforts to bring knowledge, stories, and highlights from across Washington State. We end the year on some pretty positive notes. We had 5,300 downloads of the podcast in year one, with over 3,000 of those coming in the last 30 days. Our number one listen to episode was number seven with Maria Pence talking about her journey from police officer to over 300 units in the greater Spokane area. If you are new to the podcast, you're going to want to go back and listen to that episode for sure. That brings me to today's investor highlight. Podcasting is a lot like real estate investing. It's a long, slow process. You're not going to make a lot of money in the short run, nor are you going to get tens of thousands of downloads in the first season. Both are about being consistent and focused. In real estate investing, you have to be ready for the long term. You have to be willing to put in the work today for the payout years from now. Podcasting is the same way. You have to keep producing episodes, keep asking people to come on the show to share their stories. If you buy the right property, there's money to be made. If you are consistent and focused, there's money to be made. And if you can make it past season one of podcasting, you're still not going to be making money, but you've outlasted 80% of the podcasts out there. In fact, the latest stats show that 61% of Americans have listened to a podcast. It's a growing place to advertise for businesses and for people to connect, grow their network, and learn from others. That remains my hope for this podcast, that it's a place to connect, network, and learn from others that are on their same journey as me. Our sponsorship opportunities help us pay the bills to bring you a new podcast episode every other week and keep the studio lights on. Much like our real estate investing isn't focused on money, it focused on good deals, great properties, and focused processes. Our podcast isn't focused on making money from sponsors, but bringing you stories worth listening to from across the state of Washington. My goal for 2023 is that we can get to a point where we can have a new episode weekly rather than every other week. If you know of anyone who you think has a great story to tell, wants to connect and network with others, or can add value with their knowledge, please have them go to WSREIP.com and fill out the guest form on our contact page. Also in 2023, I have a goal of bringing on a co-host to the show another voice, another perspective to add to the podcast. We talk in real estate about partnerships and how partnerships can help you grow exponentially in real estate. I believe the same is true in podcasting. Partners help you grow, help you learn, and help tell the stories. So if you've been thinking about podcasting for a while, if you have a flexible schedule and love to talk to others and learn, then reach out to me at jeff at wsreip.com. And let's chat about what it would mean to be a co-host of the Washington State Real Estate Investing Podcast. 2023 is going to be a fun year for the podcast. Thank you for being a part of it, and thank you for supporting us by downloading and listening. If you have any suggestions to make the show better, please do reach out to me at jeff at wsreip.com to have a conversation. 
And that brings me to today's show and my chat with Alexis McPherson, the owner of Bats in the Belfry Home Inspection out of Spokane, and how she got started in the home inspection industry and things to look for in a home as a buyer of real estate. I hope you have a great 2023. And with that, on with the show. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Washington State Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm excited to uh, have Lexi here with us today, who is a home inspector out of the Spokane area. And uh, we're going to be talking about home inspections today, inspection reports, and everything around the buying process when it comes to home inspection. Lexi, thank you for joining us today. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the home inspection arena. Yeah, totally. Thanks for having me. I also think it's really funny that you've had Kira on. She is one of the only she, there's four home inspectors that are wow. female in the entire city. Um, mm. And I haven't met her yet and I'm excited to. Um, but yeah, it was a complete accident. I have an art background. I was going to art school and then COVID happened. And then I found home inspector TikTok somehow. And then oh, I was wow. like, oh my gosh, that's a job. You can just look at people's stuff and look at their houses and see if there's anything wrong with it. And uh, I looked into it and there was a class in two weeks and my husband said, do it. So I did. And then it was a snowball and (laughs) here I am. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's great. And so you've only been doing, you've been doing this since June. You started your business in June. Yeah, No, kind of. My class started June 4th. Okay. It was a three week class. Washington state has some pretty um, strict rules. You have to take um, 120 hours of in-class room work. And then um, I think 40 hours of field work. And I just went and did it. And then that was June. And then it was three weeks. And then July 1st was my test. And I somehow passed it first try and just kept going. Wow. And staying busy? Um, Kind of. Not really, because I'm still pretty new in the area. Um, I'm actually from Alaska. So I've only been here for four years. Okay. Um, I don't have the the background uh, in the industry. I don't really know many people, but I just joined a BNI group um, and I got my structural pest inspector license. I got my oh, wow. mold cert, my indoor air quality cert. So when Good I'm for not you. Like, actually physically working, I am marketing. I am learning. I'm awesome. doing everything I can. Well, hopefully being on the podcast, we can uh, help you uh, build that network a little yeah. bit more as well. Uh, because you work in and around the Spokane area, I was wondering if you had like maybe top three things investors and home buyers mm-hmm. need to be aware of when purchasing a home specifically in, in the Spokane area. Yeah. So definitely a lot of the houses here are old, um, which is great. I personally love old houses. Yeah, um, we do too. But they can have their problems, as uh, you know. And water. So the biggest enemy mm. of a house is water. And especially with the old houses, um, sometimes they're not always maintained. People aren't educated on like how to take care of it or they can't afford it. And water damage in one way or another is the biggest problem. So like looking for where water intrusion can happen or has happened. That's a big one that I've noticed. Um, And I mean, everything kind of ties into that. Another, um, from what I've seen so far, um, ventilation in those houses also are a problem. Mm. So you need a certain amount of ventilation for your attic space um, in order for your home to be functional. And it's something like one square foot of ventilation for every 300 square feet of surface area up there. Um, And when you don't have that moisture and heat can get trapped in your attic and it'll ruin your roof. So if you see a roof and it's not that old, like I just had one that was only 13 years old, but it was almost dead because there was no ventilation to the attic. And so it was completely wavy. Yeah. Um, because that moisture gets in there and it kind of just sinks between the rafters sometimes. Um, and it kind of curls the uh, individual shingles. They'll cup and they'll buckle. And that allows water to get up underneath the shingles and into the underlayment and to the sheathing. And that's what causes a lot of the big damage to roofs that I've seen. Yeah. And I mean, I think 
you know, one of the thing that we find with all the homes that we own in Spokane is especially the older homes, we find that they don't have fans, (laughs) you know, there's not fans in bathrooms and and again, that ventilation, right. There's just not a lot of ventilation in these. It's so important. Um, so like the house I'm in right now, I'm staying with my sister and there's no bathroom fan and there's, there's not a single exhaust fan in this entire house. Yeah. And I have my equipment and like, I have a little VOC tracker and like PP or PM 2.5, like a lot of the airborne particulates. And that thing goes crazy. When <laughs> cooking, when someone is showering, it is yeah. so important to have those fans. Yeah. And that's not a good have point. them and go it's into the one of the, the things attic. that we always do. Yeah. It's one of the first things we do is look for fans and then we re- usually replace them, you know, especially in older homes, just, just replace them. They're, they're not that expensive. Get up there and, no. and replace them. Just don't vent them into your attic. That's yes. Not, yeah. Properly vent them. <laughs> I'll be looking at houses because we're going to be buying a house eventually. Um, and if there's no hood vent and it was like flipped, I'm like, what else are they missing? What did yeah, they not right? do? Because that one's so, so easy and so fundamental. But yeah. once again, education. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the report uh, that you give to buyers and what do they need to know about the home inspection report that you provide them? So... Um, I just switched inspection software and it's fantastic. Um, I'm using one called Spectora. Um, There are people like realtors who will be familiar with um, reports. That's the one that people tend to like, and I love it. It's very, very straightforward, very organized um, and very customizable. So I am a very like kind of neurotic. I will (laughs) put every single thing in my report and I let people know beforehand everything is going to be in here. Little things, cosmetic things, because those things add up. And if you have like, I did a sample report right here. There was 127 items inspected and 16 of them were maintenance, 19 were moderate. And like one was a safety hazard. Hmm. And, but when you get those maintenance items up into like the fifties or sixties, just these little tiny things, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Um. So I do go through the entire house, fine tooth comb, everything is in my report, but that doesn't mean it's bad. And I think Mm. that's something that's important about all inspection reports. There's no perfect house ever. Yeah. Um, And that it's because it's a living thing. It's constantly moving. It's constantly shifting. It needs attention um, and it needs cared for. So I like that mine, it separates it out into categories. So if you want to look at those safety hazards, you can just click that button um, Mm. and et cetera. I also have um, it in there. So if there is a maintenance item or if there is something that's more moderate or a safety, well, any of it actually, it will refer like DIY or handyman if it's something easy um, or if it's something a little bigger, like tuning your furnace or changing out some duct work, that's not a safety hazard, but it's going to, you're probably not going to want to do that. Um, and then I also like to include little graphics and articles like with each report. So if you've got like a shingle problem, I'll put an article in there for why it's important to take care of those things and what to look for. So it's not just pipe is leaking, recommend plumber evaluate. I really don't like that. And that's (laughs) pretty much how we're trained. Yeah. And to, to re- reduce liability, which I understand, but I think you can keep your liability low while still giving people the tools they need to succeed. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's such a good thing to point out that there's no such thing as a perfect home. I think, mm-hmm. especially as a first time home buyers, if there's any first time home buyers that are listening to this, you think you finally found your home, you have the inspector come out and you, next thing you know, you've got a list of things and you can get yeah. overwhelming really quickly of, sucks. but I thought this was a brand new house or I didn't think that they said it looked, it looks good, right? It looks good. Yeah. How can it be all these things wrong with it? Yeah. Unfortunately, there's just going to be things. I think new inspections just- sometimes have more than old yeah. houses. Yeah. Um, things are going up too quick right now and people are not paying enough attention. There are houses um, with no insulation. Like I was, yeah. I was doing a mold inspection and I had my thermal out to make sure there was no water I was missing. And I got to the window and they were vinyl windows and it's a 1930 house. So it, it had been replaced at some point. Sure. There was no yeah. insulation around the window above, <laughs> below, sides. They just 
didn't put it in. Yeah. So yeah. it's incredibly valuable to get a home inspection um, because it can be a really good tool, like to yeah. know what you're getting into, to know if do your means match that house's needs. Yeah. Because like there's that. no it's bad house because yeah. you can take a house that's like dilapidated, but if you get a good contractor in there or get somebody who just wants to put in that work, it's it can be fabulous. But then yeah. there's houses that need very little work and then they don't get worked on at all. And then they go into disrepair. It's really so individual. Yeah. And it's so true. Every house is, is unique and different for sure. Um, most of our listeners are real estate investors. What are some simple things they should be looking for in a home they are considering to purchase? Are there things, you know, when you're just walking into a home for the first time that you find that are some of like just some key things to look for quickly just to kind of get you started down the road of the purchasing process? Yeah. So I got a couple positive and a couple look out for that. Okay. Um, the hood vent being one. Um the other one being flex tubing. Mm. If you go into a house and under the sink, it's got that like corrugated plastic stuff. Just keep your eye out. That's not mm. professional. Plumbers do not use that. It's They shouldn't even sell it in stores. Um, it is tip. always going to be called out 100% of the time because like gunk can get in those yeah. little crevices and those, the corrugations and that plastic is really thin and it will um, deteriorate the plastic and you can get holes and then you'll have leaks, but they won't be big leaks. It's little things, little things turn into big things. Yeah. Before you, Especially like, you on rental realize. properties. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, flex tubing, no bueno. Yeah. Um, but Old wood, old growth wood. If you go into a house and you see original wood and like original floors and it's not damaged and it's not like rotting, that will last so long. Yeah. The rings in the wood, it was grown for a much longer period of time. And so it's so much more sturdy and resilient. And even like things that are completely have been water damaged, like the windowsill over here looks awful. And when I got here, I like got my moisture meter out it's totally fine. It's completely yeah. solid and intact. And you can just like scrub and vacuum mold off of that stuff. But new constructions and newer houses will have modern wood, which is grown very fast. And so the, the rings are way further apart. They're more susceptible to insect damage. They're more susceptible to mold. Um, and they're not as strong. So my favorite, favorite thing in houses is old original wood. I'm glad that you pointed that out. You know, my wife and I, we redid our house. We have a 1926 yeah. Tudor here in Seattle uh, and we kept all the original wood and which our contractors hated because when like the electrician was coming through or the mm -hmm. plumber was coming through, this stuff's like cement, you know, it's a hundred mm -hmm. years old and it is like, you, they just don't, you don't make wood like that anymore. So we kept it no. all. Either we reused it in walls or we've made yeah. furniture out of it. Cause it is just incredible stuff. And we did the same thing on all our rental properties. I love that you point that out. If you, I mean, especially with the price of wood today, but anything yeah. that you can salvage that is old growth, that old original wood, it's Get totally it. worth hanging on to. Cause to your point, it doesn't, it doesn't mold or the mold scrapes off it. It just, you know, it lasts so much better. It's just much such a way better quality. Yeah. That's such a good point. If you've got old growth, don't figure out a way don't to use get rid it. Of it. Keep it. Yeah. Use it for something else if you don't want it there. Same thing with yeah, hardware. Exactly. Yeah. Old hardware is fantastic because the metal mm. is so much more sturdy. Like hinges, a lot of the door problems that you have in older houses or just houses in general, like if it goes out of square, um, it's a lot of times a hinge problem. Doesn't happen with old doors as much because yeah. it's just so sturdy, um, mm. locking mechanisms, door handles. Like I love old, I love old houses. I love old hardware. Yeah. Um, and it's beautiful. The craftsmanship is unmatched. They don't do that yeah. anymore. Yeah. I love that. I think those are some really great tips, some things to look for, you know, that, and what I love is those are things that you, you don't always think about when you first walk into a home, you know, and no. what, what, what is the year of the home? And then start looking at the timber that was used so in that important. home. And is it some way you can salvage it or use it or, you know, be able to move a wall and use the same two yeah. by fours, you know, or two by sixes or, or whatever it happens to be. So that's great. I love that. I think that's, uh, that's great. Um, any other tips or tricks that you wanted to share before we 
get ready to kind of talk about this from like the seventies to the nineties. That was the wild west when it comes to building. You had, I would say craftsmanship and pride of work was much different up until I would say about 1940, 1945. And then I would say from like 1945 to like 1960 ish, it was okay. So it was fine. But then seventies, eighties, nineties, there's a lot of moisture problems. Mm. Um, it could go back to ventilation, also building techniques and materials. It was a time where they were trying a lot of new things that just ended up not working. Um, not to say those are bad houses. There's lots of good bits about them. Just keep an eye right. out um, for that. Yeah. Yeah. Moisture. I like that. Moisture. Knowing the age of your home, you know, it goes knowing the age of your home is, is so important. Uh, it's so important for sure. Um, well, if people want to reach out to you and maybe book your services or learn more about the services that you offer, uh, whether it's even you were talking about you do mold, um, what mm-hmm. are some of the other services that you can you can help and support with? Um, I do like wood destroying organisms, um, like okay. structural pest inspections, that's beetles, termites, ants, um, and fungi. And okay. um, I'll do indoor air quality. Um, eventually, I'll be getting a blower door and I'll be able to do full um, energy analysis and audits. Um, oh, cool. and, um, I, I tend to focus, um, a lot on safety. I'm a survivor of domestic assault and, um, abuse, and it can be really scary going into mm. places, um, that you haven't been before. So I, I try yeah. to be a person that is understanding. Um, mm. and like, I check every single lock. I check every single window legally. You don't have to, you just have to check right. a representative number. Um, Hmm. no, I'm going over every inch of that place and making sure it's safe. Um, I do basic bug sweeps for, uh, GPS, um, listening and video devices back to that safety thing. Um, I'm in hotels and Airbnbs and it occurred to me that somebody could walk into an open house and do the same thing. And that was a little sketch. Um, and yeah, home inspection. And I love, love, love old houses. A lot of inspectors don't because it does take a lot more time. Um, yeah. Like I had a 1905 house and it took me 10 hours and I did not stop oh, moving. Wow. It wasn't yeah. a, I was dawdling. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, so that's that's what I focus on. Um, and then you can get a hold of me. You can call my uh, work number and I can just I can pick up. That's uh, 509-208-4445. Um, Or you can just give me an email at my work email, um, bitbhomeinspection at gmail.com. And then if you want, I can give you my social for later and you can put it in whatever. Yeah. Awesome. And we'll make sure all of that is in the show notes as well. Make it very easy for people. They can scroll down to the show notes when they're listening to this and, and reach out and contact you. Yeah. I'm mostly active on TikTok and Instagram. All right. That's a good spot to hang out. There's a lot of of home buyers there. Yeah. Yeah. Great. My that's education great. is the most important thing to me. I, I realized when I started this, that I didn't know anything about taking care of a home and there was nowhere for me to learn it. And it like, I am in an area that's kind of older and kind of more run down. And it occurred to me that these people are probably going to be in a bad spot if they can't afford to fix their home. Um, mm. And they don't even know what they have to do. So Hmm. I try really hard to put as much information out into the world to give people a hand. And, oh, and uh, like all of my reports um, come with, I've probably got about a dozen documents now on like how to take care of your house and what to look out for. And yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Lexi, thank you so much for taking time to chat with us today. We'll make sure that links to everything and ways that you can reach out and contact her are in the show notes. Um, So thanks for spending some time with us today. Thank you for having me.